Well, good morning, everybody. Weather radar to a meteorologist is like a fire hose to a firefighter and a camera to a photographer. It is one of, if not the most important tools that we use during our weathercast here on Iowa's News Now. And it's by far the most important tool when it comes to live tornado warning coverage and severe weather coverage. Now, many times you'll see us standing in front of radar. So I figured a really good lesson for everybody to understand is exactly how radar works. And we're gonna look at a few case studies, a few events that have happened over the last couple of weeks on radar to show you exactly what we were looking at and how you can look at it for yourself. So let's start things off with our Weather First Workbook today, episode six. We'll take a look at radar itself, understanding the basics of radar. What we know is that there's typically a thunderstorm that forms out there and we use radar to look at this and understand how much rain is falling, maybe if there's hail falling or perhaps if there's something severe going on like a tornado. Now, typically speaking, those thunderstorms are a big distance away from radar sites. The radar site that we typically use to cover Cedar Rapids is over in the Quad Cities. So it's upwards of 80 to 100 miles away. We have another weather radar in Des Moines, which looks at the Waterloo area, and one up in La Crosse, Wisconsin, to look at far northeastern Iowa, including areas like Decorah. So typically speaking, the weather that we look at is very far away from the radar, but that's okay because the radar, it's very powerful. It can see a great deal away. And the radar, it's essentially a rotating dish that's constantly sending out a signal and then listening to what comes back. So in this case, you're looking at the radar, it's setting up a radar beam and it's listening to see what bounces back. And that's important because the harder the object, the louder it is and the higher it'll uh, show up on radar. Now there is a slight problem. Since a radar beam goes straight out and the earth is not flat, it's curved. That means the radar beam goes out and as it gets farther and farther away from the radar site, it shoots higher and higher and higher up in the atmosphere. So for example, if you're looking at multiple storms, the farther away those storms are from the radar site, the higher up in the sky or higher up in the storm that the radar is looking at. So for example, that leftmost storm, it's looking pretty low, likely where the rain is falling. If you're shooting the second storm, it's a little bit higher up, kind of maybe where the hail might be falling in that storm. And then the final storm, you can see it's looking at the very, very top of the storm. So we don't get a great amount of data with that. And again, that's a very important aspect of weather radar, simply because if we're looking at things like tornadoes, we want to know what's happening at the very bottom of the storm. And the farther it is away from the radar site, we can no longer see the very bottom of it. So let's talk about what a weather radar looks like. My best description is basically a golf ball on a tee. This is a weather radar at the National Weather Service in the Quad Cities, so down in Davenport, Iowa. You can see the big white dome kind of sitting on a big stand. Now, what's going on inside of that radar? Well, to do that, here's a video I shot of what's called the Doppler on wheels. It's a mobile Doppler radar that we use to study tornadoes. This is a video I took when we were using it to study tornadoes back in Colorado in 2017. Inside that big golf ball, there's a rotating dish that's going around and constantly spinning. It's constantly looking for things to look at, such as rain, hail, or tornadoes. So it's a huge asset to our severe weather coverage. And so what's an example of some things that a radar can see? Well, of course, rain and hail we touched on, but also tornadoes. Here's video from Johnson County back in May of 2019, just last year. And you'll notice around the base of the storm, look at all the little tiny pieces of debris. You have little pieces of the trees flying up, leaves, twigs. The radar can see that. So let's take a look at a little experiment here to kind of show you exactly what radar is looking at. Again, as the rain is falling, uh, it is scanning the atmosphere. So we have a little piece of paper here, got a bottle of uh, water, it's kind of dyed blue. And you'll see, thank you, Rebecca. And you'll see when you kind of spray the water bottle out, all the little droplets, right? All the little droplets of water are kind of falling there, pretty evenly distributed, very, very small in nature. Well, what happens if you throw something bigger in the mix, like a hailstone? This is actually a hailstone that we saw here at Broadcast Park on just last week, last Tuesday. And you'll notice the hailstone much, much larger than all those little dots, those little rain droplets. So hail, for example, shows up a lot louder because again, it's listening for things. Hail shows up a lot louder on weather radar. Well, finally, what if we threw 
some leaves into the mix, much, much bigger than the hailstone. These show up even louder on weather radar. And again, leaves, that's what's being picked up by tornadoes up in the atmosphere. So that's again, very, very important to our severe weather coverage. So radar can see all sorts of things, not just rain and hail, but it can also so see tornadoes. It doesn't see the actual tornado itself, it sees the debris that the tornado is lifting. So that's all kind of the basics of radar. Let's now take a look at some radar images. We'll go back over to this side of things. Here's a radar image that was captured in southern Mississippi just on Easter Sunday. This is a very unpleasant looking radar image. When we talk about tornadoes, this is kind of that textbook example of what we're looking for for tornadoes. A few things you may have heard before is the hook echo. I'm going to outline it here. And you'll notice we kind of have this little storm here and there's a little hook on the southern side of that. That is the hook echo that we refer to, that little hook on the southern side of the storm. That is where a possible tornado would be. We'll zoom in a little bit wider there and you'll see that the hook is very, very pronounced with the storm approaching the town of Seminary, Mississippi. That again is the hook right in that area, right where that kind of uh, bright pink is showing up. So that bright pink, by the way, is the tornado. We call this part of a supercell a tornado debris signature, or TDS. We use a lot of terms in meteorology. This is a tornado debris signature, or debris ball, showing up on radar. And what you're not seeing, you're not seeing rain falling here. The pink's not showing heavy rain falling. That's debris that's being lifted up in the sky. Now we call radar, it's called Doppler radar. The Doppler part of radar means wind speed. Essentially, it's listening for the wind speed. It can see how fast all this stuff on radar is moving. It can see how fast those raindrops are moving. So we have a product that we use called velocity. This is called reflectivity. It's just the raw what it's hearing on radar, how loud it's showing up. So for example, heavy rain, hail falling here, probably a tornado ongoing there. If we switch to the velocity product, this shows us what the wind looks like. And this is one of the strongest tornado signatures I have ever seen on a radar image. What you're looking at here is we typically refer to it as the couplet or the uh, couplet on radar. So the radar in relation to this right now is nowhere to the top of your screen. What you're seeing here is wind blowing towards the radar in the blues and purples. And in the reds and oranges, you're seeing the wind going away from the radar. So you're seeing wind going in opposite directions right next to each other. And that implies that there is some type of rotation going on there. So for example, again, the wind going towards the radar and that causes it, oops, let me go back here, to spin. And what you're looking at here is spin in the atmosphere. And that is what we call a couplet showing up on a radar. That is where the tornado would be. Now, of course, we have a lot of pretty colors that we can look at on the radar, but these colors represent wind speed. So I can show you exactly how fast the radar is picking this up. In the bright pinks on the right side, so the wind blowing towards the radar, it's blowing at 123 miles an hour. I don't know if you'll be able to see that, it's pretty small, but it's blowing towards the radar at 123 miles an hour. If you look at the oranges and the browns on the other side, that is blowing away from the radar at 111 miles per hour. What that means is that with wind blowing towards the radar at 100 miles an hour, wind blowing away from the radar at 100 miles an hour, that means there is spin at 200 miles per hour in that storm. That is a very, very strong signature showing up on radar, and that likely means there's a pretty strong tornado in progress. This has been rated at least EF4 by the National Weather Service, which is a high-end tornado, upwards of 170 to 200 miles per hour at the ground. Now, there's another type of radar product that you may see us use more and more often. This one is a little bit more complicated. It's called correlation coefficient. It's got a really fancy name. What we call it here at Iowa's News Now is debris tracker. We can look at the storm and we can see whether we think it's hail falling, rain falling, or something else. So I'm gonna pull up this product and it's called again, correlation coefficient. What you're gonna see on radar are bright blues popping up. What that means 
is that whatever is happening right in this area of the storm, it's not rain, it's not snow. It's something that we call non hydro or non meteorological, something that's not weather. In this case, what you're seeing in the storm is actual debris being lifted up by the storm. You saw my little experiment over here with the leaves. What this is seeing is probably leaves flying up in the storm, maybe parts of houses flying up in the storm. You're seeing a lot of debris being lofted by that tornado. So again, that's a pretty classic example of a supercell ongoing in Mississippi. And again, this was last, this past Sunday, Easter Sunday. So again, to recap, this is what we call reflectivity. It's how loud something is showing up on radar. The reds and dark reds there, that's indication of heavy rain and hail falling. And then we have this hook echo here. That's where the hook is on the radar. That is where we would find a tornado. And that bright pink showing up, that is a debris ball. Now here in the Cedar Rapids area, in much of eastern Iowa, last Tuesday, we got a pretty rude awakening with some pretty large hail. So I'm gonna go ahead and look at that event. So again, we have multiple radars all across the country to utilize. And you can kind of see all the little, actually you can't see them, I don't think, on your screen, but there's a bunch of different radar sites across the country out there. And so the one that we use in, the national, er, in eastern Iowa primarily is the one in the Quad Cities, Davenport. So this is a radar, this is an old radar image uh, from a few days ago, that's what's showing up there. But what I want to show is last Tuesday, and I want to go to about 7 p.m. I'm going to load up that storm here. This is the storm that moved over Cedar Rapids. And you'll notice this storm, unlike the one that we were looking at in Mississippi, it has a lot more bright pinks going on on the radar site. That is essentially a louder radar image popping up. That means something really, really large is happening there. And it's not where we would expect to find a tornado, which means this is probably something worse, uh, which was a large hail for us here in Cedar Rapids. So what I want to show is the velocity product and that we showed how fast those raindrops are moving. And you'll notice on the radar product is we don't have what we call a tight couplet. We don't have the bright red next to bright green. So where that bright pink was falling, that's not a tornado ongoing there. That is hail. And what we can show on, again, that other product that we talked about, the correlation coefficient, that's a fancy terminology. What we can see that it's showing up as like these greens and oranges. That's an indication that hail is falling in that storm. Another really interesting feature on radar is that this kind of blue thing that's extending from the top of the screen here, the top of the radar image. This is what we call a three-body scatter spike. We're using a lot of fancy terms here. Hope you're kind of following along. You can go back and watch this on later to kind of get a little bit more on radar. But we call this a three-body scatter spike. Basically, this is not actually something that's falling from the sky, but it's the radar getting confused, and it's thinking it's seeing something that it's not. And this is an indication of very large hail. So I'm going to go back to the reflectivity product which again is how loud things are. You'll see all the bright pinks. That's again, those very large hailstones falling. Again, here in Cedar Rapids, we had hailstones up to maybe golf balls, baseballs, and tennis balls. Very, very large hail. That is what the radar was actually seeing there. I'm gonna back this up to when it was back over the Cedar Rapids area. And again, we have weather radar. This, I can go back and look at a lot of different events over the past month. Uh, here at Iowa's News Now, we have radar which can hold on for about six hours or so. So we can kind of look back at how things work. Now I want to play back how the storm really did kind of just explode northwest of Cedar Rapids. So this is the storm we're looking at. That one went north. We're looking at this area right here by Palo Shellsburg. Notice how it went from a little blip on radar to so a little bit of green kind of showing up. Very, very small returns. That's an indication of very light rain falling. But we knew that the environment, the atmosphere that we were in, it would allow these strong thunderstorms to develop. And so you'll watch as it approaches Cedar Rapids, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Now it's starting to see more reds showing up. That's an indication of very heavy rain that starts to fall. And just as it approaches Cedar Rapids, you'll start noticing those pinks showing up. That is when the hail starts being lofted up higher and higher in the storm. You see the large hailstones starting to form. And unfortunately, the storm, it can hold them anymore. They got too big for what we call the updraft the thunderstorm to hold it up. And it began to fall right on top of Cedar Rapids. And you'll see those very bright pinks on the north side of Cedar Rapids and west side of Marion. That was 
extremely large hail that was falling there. So we looked at tornadoes and we looked at very large hail. There's so much that you can look at on weather radar. Uh, for example, hurricanes, you can see hurricanes really well. And an interesting thing with hurricanes is you can see birds flying in the eye of hurricanes using that correlation coefficient I spoke to earlier. So a lot of cool things on a radar that you can see. Of course, if you want to learn more, there's all sorts of cool things online. And if you do have any other questions, you can feel free to tweet at me at NCBS2 or have your parents email me, npstuart at sbgtv.com. I'll be happy to answer any weather radar questions that you have. So I hope you enjoyed this installment of the Weather First Workbook, something a little bit more advanced, something a little bit heavy hitting with the weather radar, but I hope you did find it interesting. Meteorologist Rebecca Coltman will be back this or Thursday. Actually, it'll be meteorologist Brandon Marshall this Thursday. We'll have a little experience for you on our next Weather First Workbook on Thursday. Have a good one, everybody.